Hey guys, this is gonna be great. I am going to show you today how to build one of these wicking pot gardens so you can have really dense, nutrient-rich food growing in your backyard for your family. Hey, it's Rod here, your aquaponic gardener, and I'm gonna show you how you can feed yourself and your family growing your backyard with whatever resources you've got available in these unpredictable times. And stay to the end and I'm going to give you a free gift as well. So be sure to stay right to the end and uh, you won't regret it. Today I'm here with Paul and uh, thanks for joining me Paul. We're here to look at his backyard aquaponic system. Now wicking beds and aquaponics is not a new concept. They're not new concepts. They've been around for quite some time but making uh, productivity and harvesting and making the best use of your available space and producing as much food as possible that's got to be the end game and that's what we're going to show you here today. Now a lot of people think that to do aquaponics or a wicking pot garden or a wicking bed garden you need a lot of space. Well I'm here today to bust that myth. It's a myth. You don't need a lot of available space. In fact this wicking pot garden and aquaponics garden that you see behind me here is growing on top of a concrete driveway. So if I spin this around here you'll be able to see that this is actually a driveway and all that has been done here is you've just gone ahead and uh, built an aquaponic system on top of the driveway. So you're just utilizing the space that you have. So don't think you need a huge amount of space, you don't. Have a look at that in the background there. It truly is a driveway. This is just like any garden pot that you've got in your own backyard. We've all got them under our house. We've all got them um, in the garden, overgrown or whatever. Just dig one out, just find one under the house and reuse it today. If you don't have a a pot at home that you can use. You can buy them pretty cheap at your local hardware shop as well. We found these whiskey barrels for just $15 each and I think it's going to be a really great addition to the system. They're pretty sturdy plastic and look pretty good too uh, with the wood grain on the outside. So essentially a wicking bed as most people know them by or a wicking pot it just has a reservoir of water underneath and that reservoir of water is constantly wet and it allows, it's got a, a layer of um, textured material. You could use hessian bag, you can use a GA fabric, you could use anything. And then that also stops any soil. You put a soil layer above that and it just stays moist all the time. So your plants aren't constantly being watered from above, they're being watered from underneath. And what that does is also reduce pathogen attacks. It also reduce any sort of mold or mildew that can attack the roots as well. So you're minimizing all those things by watering. It is coming from the top, as you see in the photo here behind me, it's coming from the aquaponics and then it's going straight down a tube into the base and then it's it's coming up from there. So it's building that re reservoir at all times. And in this particular system here, we've got an IBC tank underneath and that is then going back. It's got fish in there too and it travels back into the entire aquaponic system. So what we've done is we've linked a wicking pot into an aquaponic system. Whatever material that you use as a wicking medium and it allows the roots to receive that water, the roots will dive down deep as well and that's the whole principle behind it. So it wicks up the water from the base and that way you, it just lasts longer as well so you can go away, you know that your plants are watered at all times so you can just go on holidays, travel wherever you want to go, you know you'll come back and your garden's still alive. Now, of course, if you use aquaponics water and you tie it all together like we've done here, then your wicking pot is going to be fantastic. It's that next level. So if you want a next level garden, you join it up to the aquaponics system. And if you haven't got aquaponics, geez, you better get some soon. So using that aquaponics water is really, really rich in uh, nutrients from your fish. That fish waste has been used in a different manner as it it's still being uptaken by the plants, of course, but it just gives that extra element to this wicking bed idea. And building your own wicking pot garden it just doesn't take a lot of work. So it's really, really simple to do. We'll show you how to do that now. And uh, I know that you can build one yourself. Okay, just starting this next little project. It's basically a um, continuous flow wicking pot. Uh, and it's for the cocoa tree I've got in my aquaponics. It's just totally loving it, going great guns picture perfect tree about to, it's just done a big growing spurt but I need it out of there so that's going to go in the pot which is going to have gravel filled up probably about a third of the way up uh, and then a couple of layers of hessian bag and then the soil with the tree in it now water from my fish tank is going to be pumped up into a pipe that sort of comes in over the edge fills up the bottom to a certain level and then it will flow out a pipe on the side keeping that level always the same which the water wicks up through to the plant, then that water will actually flow back out and then it will flow back into my rear fish tank. 
which then flows down through a pipe into the middle fish tank and then down through pipes into my lower fish tank. So it's an aquaponic wicking pot, continuous flow wicking pot. So my own little devised project, should be fun. Okay, I've finished plumbing in my pot. Uh, now, once again, it's just straight up a big um, pot plant pot, garden pot, uh, with its tray, which I've siliconed um, a big thick bead of silicon in there to make it a watertight pot. And then I plumbed in an overflow, which is just uh, an elbow bend in there, stop gravel going up in it once I put the gravel in there. And I've also plumbed in the inline. Uh, so that's coming from my fish tank, that pipe down here, and flows up into these grow beds. And now I've tapped it and now it flows back and fills up here. This gravel guard will mean the water will go straight back down, straight down into that water reservoir, not through the soil. So then it just has a natural wicking action evenly from that gravel water level back up through. So gravel up to that water level, hessian, hessian layers on that, and then the soil on top to wick through. And then that flows straight back into my fish tank or my prawn tank. And I'll probably tap that so it'll actually end up being much closer to the water when it flows out and down. Yeah, getting there. Now I've just got to rinse out some more scoria and some also, I'm gonna use blue metal gravel and mix it up and put the soil in. Okay, so this next stage is complete. I filled it with gravel. I've set my pipe in the right place. Um, so now this basically just sits on there flowing the water in, keeping it topped up. Uh, the gravel's in there now, so I've got the mix of the red scoria, which is a volcanic rock. Uh, very porous, so really good for aquaponics for microbes to live in it and build up that family of microbes and also I've used the blue metal so blue metal gravel mix it up try and get some more minerals into the mix um, and then the overflow pipe I've sort of added a little bit of length so it just doesn't splash so much but still got it flowing and creating air dissolved oxygen into the system that one's just started dumping so there we go so now what I'm going to do is leave it for about a day just to see how much it dries out um, it's been sunny and clear so that should give me an indication of how much wicking action is happening at that level. I've basically filled it up so I've got about uh, five centimetres of gravel above the water, thereabouts. Um, hopefully that's enough uh, height above the water for it to not stay too wet. Um, but then I'll lay the layers of hessian um, covering it, making a layer. Uh, and then putting the dirt on top so all the dirt doesn't sink through into the gravel but it actually keeps it above it. Uh, and then your plants in top and that'll wick through nicely. So I'll watch to see how dry it gets. Okay, there we go. Next stage. I've actually added a, a finer grade a scoria. It's actually Quinken scoria. So more of a local one. But this one here, um, much smaller just to sort of sit within the gaps along the top. So it's just a thin layer along the top just to build up a bit more level, but also just to help that wicking action um, nice and evenly happen as well. So try that out, and then I'll stick the Hesham on top of that. Okay, the next stage is done. I've actually got the cocoa tree in. So now I've put a couple of layers of Hessian. So this is the stuff I've used, uh, Hessian roll. So I've put it three layers thick, cut it in a nice circle to match the pot um, in underneath. That's sat on top of that gravel and then the soil in. And then I planted the tree, and I've just staked it just while it's getting established. Uh, but then I'll be able to plant stuff um, around the outside, because this will be all nutrient rich. Um, like an aquaponic system, it's gonna feed that nutrients from the water, from the fish water, all through the plants. So I can put more in one pot. So that's all set up and ready to go. I may actually raise the level, put a little bit more soil in it, sort of more around the outsides and grow stuff in, and see how that goes. Um, and in there you can obviously see fish swimming around. Any of these techniques like aquaponics or wicking beds or wicking pots, they're going to save you effort. It's going to save you energy and it's better time harvesting instead of actually digging in the soil. And that's what it's all about. It's about making your life easier. So whether you've got a, a, a small uh, veranda and you you're in a unit or whether you're in a, a big um, homestead it doesn't matter you're making your life a little bit easier so you can spend time with your own family as well spend time doing other things harvesting uh, picking 
eating <laughs> instead of digging hard labor in, in the ground. And if you haven't heard already, I've actually just launched an aquaponics accelerator course where I teach you everything you need to know about aquaponics, everything you need about wicking beds and wicking pots and how to grow food fast in your backyard. So join me for that. There'll be a link down below and uh, feel free to check it out. So whenever you're doing a new project, you've kind of got to learn the ins and outs of it and the, the little pitfalls to it and, and uh, make it all work. But once again, with this sort of thing, it's so easy. So when I built this, I set up the gravel reservoir. Um, I've got the, the pipe coming from the fish tanks straight in and there's a pipe here that takes it straight down the water ends up first into that reservoir flows out so it fills up and then it wicks through but I, I set my pipe so the water level will be coming at the bottom of this it wasn't quite high enough the water level wasn't really um, high enough to, to wick through so all I've done very simple added a few elbow pieces to raise the water level back up in the pot and now it's wicking beautifully and the plants are telling me that um, so yeah simple and effective and one of the real benefits as well to your fish's health is the fact that this wicking pot is flowing directly straight into the the fish underneath so so paul's got perch in here and those perch are just getting oxygenated and oxygenated every second because the water previously oh i've got a marsh fly on me here but the water previously was not flowing very well through here and the fish weren't getting very much oxygen. Now you can go and spend money on, on aerators, you can go and put air stones in there, you can spend more money on electricity if you want to, great, if you got the money. But if you don't, you use gravity and you try and make use of what you've actually got. So as you can see here, the pipes are running on top of the, the concrete and it's going straight up into the, into the back of the pot there. The water's going straight to the bottom into that reservoir and then out uh, right there where the finger's pointing there straight into the fish tank below and then by gravity back into the main aquaponics uh, sump tank which is on the other side so ingenious well done paul fantastic system wish you all the best and i know many of the viewers out there will be able to uh, replicate this system for themselves we are in a rainforest here even though it's growing on concrete there's a rainforest right behind me and one of the benefits of what paul's actually doing here is he's got this really really rich organic layer of leaves from rainforest trees above and also the uh, cocoa tree above as well that's growing in his wicking pot that forms a really nice carpet of leaves on top it retains that moisture in the soil so the plants can really benefit and it doesn't evaporate into the atmosphere so all around brilliant idea and something that you can easily replicate at your place hey i didn't forget you i said at the start that i'd give you a free gift and i and i meant it so if you have a look in the description you will find a link there just click that link and you'll get my top 10 secrets to aquaponics i know you'll enjoy that it'll help you a lot i hope and if you want to have a look at a little bit more information just check out that video right there of how you can improve your aquaponics how you can start really simply and uh, really harvest food in your backyard for your family a lot quicker so until next time happy gardening catch you later